February 2nd through the 4th, we're doing fire school. And I know a lot of us have been through fire school before, and I understand that. Uh, right now we've got about 40 people signed up to, to come through it. It's going to fill up pretty quick. Uh, and personally, I feel like this school, I have an expectancy for it. I can't, I can't articulate it. I don't know what to say. I just feel like there's going to be glory. So I want to encourage you to sign up, uh, be a part of it. We're going to send something out for the life group leaders. Life group leaders, please uh, get involved with that. It's going to be wonderful. Okay, let me pray. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your body, the bread, your blood, the wine. Thank you for breaking the yoke of religion off of us. Thank you, Father. We love you, Jesus. Lord, help us to press in, not in a striving religious way, but with joyful hearts, God. Help us to press into what you're doing in our midst. Help us to be sober-minded, zealous for your kingdom, Father. Help us, Father. Lord, we ask that you would minister to us through the word as we minister to you with our open hearts. We love you, Jesus. We bless your name in this place. Amen. I actually am just really excited about the whole year. Um, and I, I don't know, I just feel um, zeal for what God is doing am among us. And I feel like we've pushed past something. We've gone a long way over the last uh, couple years here in this new facility. And I, I just feel like we need to keep focused moving forward. Again, not in a, you're not doing something right sort of way or striving religious way. I'm not here to, to place any burdens or weights on anybody. Uh, I'm just saying there is a grace to joyfully accelerate forward into what God is doing in your life. It's just one step out after the, after the other, being intentional and being committed to what you commit to. And I, I know that sounds so basic, but in the day-to-day -day grind of life, it gets kind of difficult to do those things, doesn't it? It does. So we're fasting starting tomorrow. I think it's important. I think we need to, to not uh, do this half-heartedly, okay? So if you feel called to fast, you need to fast according to how you feel called to fast, right? So whether it be food, whether it be uh, from your cell phone, so <laughs> I think 99% of us need that fast like today, whether it's from the news whether it's from whatever, whatever God is calling you to sacrifice in order to grow closer to him, you need to do that. You need to do it. And here's the thing. If you're like me, I don't like to fast. I love fasting. I love that it's a godly principle. I love the effects that it has in my life. But I am big, but not a big fan of fasting. And it probably there's some overlap there to think about. <laughs> I don't like to fast. Do you, who, who, who here actually enjoys it? I don't believe you. Put your hand down. Just kidding. Just kidding. I know you guys are graced in it, and I'm thankful for that. But there's something that happens in us when we fast. And I want to talk about what fasting is and what it is. And I'm going to give us some principles this morning. Of course, this is not like a comprehensive, just some points to help you understand fasting a little better. Uh, because this is something I feel like we just, if you're going to do it, let's do it. Amen. If you don't feel called to fast, it's okay. There's no condemnation. Nobody here is like, there's no, nobody is going to be commissioned to go around and check if you're fasting. Okay, there's none of that. <laughs> this will still benefit you to know what fasting is. But if you're going to do it, let's do it. Let's be intentional. Let's grow with the Lord. What if you were in, as intentional growing in him as you were asking him for things? Let's say it again. What if you were as intentional growing in him as you were asking him for stuff? Do this for me, Lord. Do this, do this, that. And he's like, I am doing it, but you need to grow in me. You need, to, you need to behold, you need to desire who I am and become my image, my likeness. That's what, this is what fasting is. Fasting is a spiritual discipline. It's important, but we have to know why we're doing it, okay? We have to know why we're saying yes to fasting. 
speaking on behalf of the Bible, <laughs> the scripture, of course, please don't uh, get legalistic with this, but fasting, according to scripture, is abstaining from food. It's abstaining from food. Of course, uh, we live in a, a covenant and uh, that provides grace. Grace is not black and white, and I'm going to get roasted online for saying that. There'll be people who are like, see, I told you, cult leader. I get it. That's fine. But grace is harder to, them to define, right? Justice is black and white. God's justice is black and white. You know what's right and what's wrong. His grace doesn't work within the means of our mind. He does things we wouldn't do because his grace is sufficient. Isn't that beautiful? So you can fast from your cell phone. I think that's a great fast. You can fast from the news. Some of us need to fast from the news. It's a great fast. But when we talk about fasting according to how the scriptures talk about fasting, it's abstaining from food. Why is abstaining from food so uh, difficult? Because you get hungry. <laughs> what happens when you get hungry? You get hangry with an H. You see the Snickers commercial? Hey, you're hangry. Eat a Snickers. What's happening there? You're finding out very quickly, and, and really, I think this is the fastest way to find out what parts of your flesh are dominating your spirit. That's what, that's what starvation does. It makes all those things in your flesh that are, that are crying in a way that you're ignoring them cry in such a way that you can't ignore them anymore. Your emotions become very real, very clear, very dominant when you are hangry, don't they? Yep. So that's what we're talking about when we say fasting. Go to Luke 4, verse 1 with me. I'm in the NLT. We're having a little difficulty with our tech right now. So you'll see the uh, New King James. It's the same thing. Same thing. Jesus, his ministry is beginning, he's baptized, he's affirmed by the Father, just like all of us. Then it says in uh, verse 1, chapter 4, Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for 40 days. Jesus ate nothing all that time and became very hungry. Then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God... Tell this stone to become a loaf of bread. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say people do not live by bread alone. And we'll stop there. Okay, who led Jesus into the wilderness? The spirit. Who led Jesus to, to not eat anything or to fast? Who empowered Jesus to rest in the word, even though he was being tempted in his flesh? The Holy Spirit. So who leads us into fasting? Who uh, empowers us when we get uh, tired or wore out, we feel like we can't go any further? What is Holy Spirit doing in the process of a fast? He's teaching us that we're not actually dependent on what we feel we need. We're dependent upon the word. See, this is what a fast does. A fast uh, it is not a spiritual measuring stick. You're not fasting to prove how spiritual you are. A fast has nothing to do with what you can do. It's learning to, to lean into the grace of God beyond what you're used to. <laughs> See, a lot of times we fast to like prove to ourselves, oh, we're spiritual enough, we're, we're holy enough. That's just a trophy of your flesh. That's not fasting, that's self-exaltation. Fasting led by the Holy Spirit is designed by the Holy Spirit to be a discipline that teaches us to, to have revelation on what we're actually created to rely on, which is the word of God. So fasting brings clarity into how dependent we actually are on God's word. Fasting teaches us, as Jesus declares, that we are truly sustained by consuming the word of God. Think of it like this. You guys know we're three-part beings, correct? Your body, your soul, your spirit, your, your soul, your mind, or your spirit, three-part beings. Right? Your soul is redeemed before the Lord. Your body is what is like your tent. It's like how we know who we are, right? Your spirit is what connects us to the Father's presence. Did you know that living in this world, if, if uh, over time, 
our spirit is lulled to sleep. Do you know that? Your spirit is lulled to sleep. Like you, you don't intend for it to be, but over time your spirit just kind of like falls asleep at the steering wheel because of the, the spirit of the world is trying to, to, to defeat you. Fasting is like taking a cold cup of water and splashing it on your spirit man's face. Saying, wake up. It's time to worship God. It's time to rest in his word. It's time to be alive in his promises. See, this is what fasting does. This is why we do it at the beginning of the year because we're lulled to sleep by the holidays. We're tired. We're detoxing from not eating four pieces of pie every night. We're, we're, we're exhausted because we've been staying up watching Christmas movies till two in the morning. Spending time with family, catching up, talking. We're tired and, and our, spirit, our spirit man begins to be lulled to sleep. And when we step into a fast, it's like taking a cup of water or it's like shaking him by the shoulders and saying, wake up and realize your, your glory who is him, the Holy Spirit. Fasting is a sharp, acute reminder to our spirit to resist our fleshly, fleshly desire and the temptations of the world. This is why we call it a spiritual discipline. How many of you know that disciplines won't save you? Right? A fast does not save you. A fast does not change you. It's what Holy Spirit does in the midst of your fast that transforms you. How many of you know disciplines are good? Right? What's a discipline? Reading the Bible is a discipline. How many of you know just reading the Bible does nothing for, for you if you're not allowing it to transform you as you read it? What's another discipline? Praying, right? Praying, worship, those things are great disciplines. And you, you do, you have to teach yourself how to worship. How many of you know it's hard to sit through an hour-long worship service if you're not disciplined to do that? But is worship going to do anything for you on its own? Absolutely not. Without the Spirit, there's nothing that transforms you. Right? So worship in partnership with the Spirit, prayer in partnership with the Spirit changes us. It actually changes things around us too. We pray for things around us to be changed. But as we pray, as we connect with the divine conversation of heaven, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we become more like them. Isn't that beautiful? I'm reading a book uh, where um, talking about, uh, we, we, we don't realize how privileged we are that we get to sit and hear the conversation between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we pray. Isn't that beautiful? I can't remember the name of the book, but um, the Dillards could tell you. They, they let me borrow it. Anyways, prayer is a discipline. But prayer on itself doesn't do anything. It's in partnership, praying in partnership with the Holy Spirit that changes you. Just like fasting. Fasting is a discipline. But disciplines without the power of the Holy Spirit actually just lead us into religiosity and legalism. I'll say that one more time. Disciplines without the work and the leading of the Holy Spirit just lead us into religiosity and legalism. I want to show you in Hebrews, the Hebrews church. Go to Hebrews 5.12, if you will. Or you can just listen as well. Hebrews, Hebrews 5.12, the writers of Hebrew is rebuking the Hebrew church because they've been believers for a long time, but they're spiritually immature. It says here in verse 12, you have been believers so long now that you ought to be teaching others. Instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things of God's word. Why do you think they need to be taught the same things over and over and over and over again? Because the Holy Spirit's not, they're not letting the Holy Spirit transform them. It's just a discipline. You are like babies who need milk and cannot eat solid food. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and does not know how to do what is right. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through, train, who through training have the skill to recognize the difference between right and wrong. <laughs> so discipline doesn't make you more righteous, does it? See, the Hebrew church, they're, they're uh, Hebrew believers that, com that converted to Christianity or who gave their lives to Jesus... And they knew how to do fasting. They knew how to do the festivals. They knew how to do the disciplines. They knew how to prayer, pray, but none of those things were actually changing them. 
They had been believers for a long time. They were doing all the right things, but they were not being transformed under the power of the Holy Spirit. And so they were wicked believers who were well-disciplined. They were spiritually immature. Let me propose this to you. You can be saved, you can be set free, you can be well-disciplined, but you can be spiritually dull and immature because you've not allowed your disciplines to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, to transform you. How do you know if, if you're being transformed by the Holy Spirit? Well, just look at your life. Are you different today than you were even a year ago? <laughs> it's actually not as hard as we think because the word gives us standards. Galatians 5 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let's think about being hangry again, right? You're starving, you hadn't eaten any meats or breads in three days, you're withdrawing from sugar, and you're starting to get super hungry. And everything everybody says is making you angry. And then you run into that person who always makes you angry, that you try to avoid. And you say something rude and mean to them. What happened there? Your fast was a tool that revealed something to you that you didn't even know was in you until you became hungry. Right? Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? So now you have two options. You can go, oh, well, I'm just fasting. You know, this is just part of it. It's a discipline. It's hard sometimes. Or you can go, Lord... I thank you that through this fast, you've revealed a part of me, a part of my flesh that was dominating my spirit. Would you now empower me to crucify that so that I may become more like you as a result of me being obedient to what you called me to? See the difference? See, this is what fasting does. Fasting, again, brings a microscope or a magnifying glass to the things of our flesh that we've been comfortably ignoring in our lives. Comfortably ignoring in our lives. Fasting prepares us for what God is leading us into next. Fasting prepares us for what God is leading us into next. Acts 13, now in the church at Antioch, there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, Lucius, Manian, that's hard to say, had been brought up with who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me and Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. See, sometimes when you feel like you're stuck in a rut or you feel like you're going around in circles or you feel like you're not getting anywhere in your walk, a fast can propel you forward. A fast can propel you forward. See, denying yourself something you're comfortable with opens up a doorway for something you didn't see. It actually permits grace to come work in you in a way that you didn't know was available to transform you and to make you ready for something God had already purposed you for, but you weren't ready to walk in yet. This is what fasting, fasting can do. There are things in our flesh that need to be crucified before God can take us to our next stage in his call. Some of us don't like that because we want to do what God wants us to do now. We want it to be done now. Can I just propose that if you're not doing it and it's not because of lack of trying, you're not ready. I don't mean to like condemn anyone. We're all in process. So it's not like because you're not ready, you're not good enough. It just means hang on to him, allow him to transform you, and allow him to gracefully bring you into his process so that he can do what he wants to do in his timing rather than birthing an Ishmael. Right? Doing it in your own timing. Fasting actually gives us the capacity to embrace process. I want to tell you a story about a 40-day juice fast I did some number of years ago. And again, I hate fasting. I love fasting, but I hate it. It's terrible. I get hungry. 
And I was much younger, and I was just starting youth ministry, and I was excited for what God was going to do in my life. You know, I had very big dreams and visions of doing all these things. And I was getting anxious and unsettled, and I wanted God to accelerate what he was doing in my life. So I started a 40-day juice fast. Nothing but juice. It was terrible. I messed up at least four or five times. There were, I'm sure Cynthia, like, found me in the pantry just shoving my face full of chocolate. And then I have to start over. And that's even worse. Like, you know, you, you're 20 days in and you just can't take it anymore. Ah, <laughs> self-control. <laughs> so I'm in this uh, fast and I'm not doing well. I'm tired all the time. I'm cranky and, you know, the Lord is just beating me up. And I'm thinking going into it, I'm just going to hear his voice 24-7 doing this. I mean, how could you not? You know, juice fast, hello. Only thing I heard was, I'm hungry. <laughs> just 24-7, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I, I evaporated, like, you know, I probably needed it, honestly. But that's all I heard. I was, I was hungry, I was miserable, tired, had to take naps at like 11 o'clock just to get through the rest of the day. It was bad. 40 days came up, finished the fast, went to Dairy Queen, ate like four cheeseburgers. Boom, 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 boom. Glorious. You shouldn't do that, by the way. It makes, <laughs> makes you very sick. I have an anointed belly. Things don't move through like that for me, so I can eat. I could eat five, probably. So I'm sitting there in the parking lot smashing the cheeseburgers thinking, boy, that was a waste of time. And I hear the voice of the Lord. And Because I'm, I'm asking, why did I do that? Nothing changed. You know, I didn't get the breakthrough I wanted. And I heard his voice. He said, John, I delivered you of anxiety. Ugh. What do you mean? I did, you wanted something different. I just showed you that you're supposed to be doing what you're doing. Mm. So I'm delivering you of anxiety. So I relented. I repented. I said, Lord, thank you for using that fast to show me that my expectancy for what you were doing in my life wasn't actually expectancy. It was anxiety of what I thought you weren't doing. <laughs> See, this is how a fast works. We sometimes think that when we fast, we're, we're twisting God's wrist to do what we want him to do for us. When in reality, God has given us the gift of fasting so that he can show us what he wants to do in us. <laughs> right? How many of you are like, oh, God, I want you to do this during my fast. That's good, okay? I'm not against you having a prayer of expectancy but I also want you to pray, God, what would you like to transform in me as a result of me saying yes to this? Think on that for a second. <laughs> right? A fast is for deliverance. Why did, why did Daniel fast? Right? He wanted deliverance for his enemies. Okay? He was, he was trying to get out of the bad situation. But how many of you know Jesus has already given you victory over your enemies? Right? His blood has already said you're clean, you're washed, you're set free, and you have victory. So then how can we be defeated if we've already been given victory? Well, it's, it's when we give permission to the enemy in our own lives. So a fast actually acts as a weapon of deliverance. It, it causes us to see the places where we've been overcome by the world, where we've been overcome by the enemy, and then gives us the power, if we so choose it, to overcome. true. So you're going to go into the fast and I bet 80% of us will mess up in like day eight. It's okay. It's okay. Just start again. Just keep going. Skip day eight, you know, get out of your system, go crush a few uh, chocolate truffles if you have to, and then get right back on the wagon. Get right back in there. I'm not kidding. God is going to do something in you. It really is, but you got to not quit. you got to not give up. And you got to let go of the idea that this is to get something from him. He's already given everything you're ever going to need. He's promised you his entire kingdom. You have it all. But he's just waiting for you to say, I'm sick of allowing the world to influence my life. And I'm going to let this fast be a detox to my spirit so that I can walk up and walk in the things that you've called me to walk in. <laughs> See, this is what a fast is for. This is the plan. You just got to not quit. Okay, we're going to do this together for 20 days. I want you to write these uh, questions down that you can ask the Holy Spirit. 
during your fast. First of all, ask them if you're called to the fast. Please don't do it if you don't feel like you're called to it. And of course, um, like if you've got special health situations, talk to a, a, a professional, medical professional. That's, it's okay to do that. God gave them wisdom to tell you don't be stupid, right? So if, if you're like uh, breastfeeding, right, you should not just completely go off a cliff with your calories. You should think about what you're doing. Be wise with the Holy Spirit, okay? If you're not c- called to fast, uh, we have an orange shirt for you to wear for the rest of the month. And <laughs> just kidding. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, question one. What are you called to fast this year? So is it food? Is it Daniel fast? I'm doing a Daniel, me and my wife are doing no meats, no sweets, no breads. What are you called to fast this year? Ask the Holy Spirit, why is he calling you to fast this? Oh, I like that. That's cool. A banner on the TVs. Let's go. <laughs> why is he calling you to the fast? Sometimes we just do it, right? Like you just do it because everybody else is doing it. And that's good. Peer pressure is good in church for good things. But ask him, why is he calling you to the fast? And then three... Ask him what he wants to transform in you through this fast. Okay, what does he want to transform in you through this fast? All right. Now notice I didn't put on there, what are you wanting, why are you, what are you wanting from God by fasting, right? I want you to let go of that question this year, if you can. Okay. And if you've like, if you've got something big in your life, you were expecting breakthrough for You just keep doing that. That's fine. We'll pray with you to expect God to break through in that way. But for those of us who are just like doing it and we're stepping into it just because we feel like we're supposed to, I want you to let go of wanting to get something from God on this one and just be focused in on what he wants to change in you. What he wants to change in you, okay? Deal? All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Stand with me if if you are so bold. Holy Spirit, you designed us with the idea that we would be eating from time to time. And in this generation, maybe looking at phones or looking at the news or whatever it is that we we do that we get comfortable with. It's going to be hard. That's the point. It's going to be hard. So Holy Spirit, we ask now for grace and strength and power to do what you've called us to do. Father, we don't want to just be halfway about this. We don't want to be half in, half out, just, well, if it's convenient, God, we just, we, we want to do it. We want to be wholehearted because we want all of what you've purposed for us to come to, to manifest in our lives. So Holy Spirit, we need your help. We need your grace. And Lord, I ask that you would help us to let go of what we think we need or we want and we would be focused solely on what you are doing in us. What are you doing in us? What are you delivering us from? What are you transforming in us? How are you making us more like you, Jesus? And I just, I feel this right now. Every person in here has a divine call for revival in this end time harvest. Every person, every person has a divine purpose. It doesn't matter what you feel like. It doesn't matter what you've heard about yourself. It doesn't matter what people say about you. You have been called with a divine purpose. And the Lord is using this to bring you into the next level of his calling. So, Father, we pray for strength to say yes if we're supposed to say yes. Father, that we would wholeheartedly embrace what you're doing in us. And that we would let you prepare us as a tabernacle for the harvest you're bringing in in these days. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen.